Another easy challenge seems to be here in the reverse engineering category, the desert of reversing. By the way, whoever did the drawings for the CTF, I really appreciate it, it looks awesome. In this category, we have to reverse engineer the programs that run on this Arduino board. So before we check out the next challenge, let's try to learn more about this platform. First of all, we know that the microcontroller used on this Arduino board is an Atmega 328P. So we can google this name and find the official Atmel website where we can download the official datasheet for this chip. Ok, so we got here a microcontroller that is based on the AVR enhanced RISC architecture. That's our first piece of information. The chip can execute AVR code. That is very different from what we use on our PCs or laptops. Those are usually Intel based 32-bit or 64-bit machines and use Intel assembly. I can read Intel disassembly ok-ish but I never read AVR disassembly. So I'm new to this, like some of you. Also RISC means reduced instruction set, which is a simplified assembler. At first that sounds cool, but to be honest, it's harder to read I think. At least for me, coming from x86, which is CISC, a complex instruction set. Basically the difference is that, uh, this is not a real example, but just to give you an idea, a CISC architecture might have multiply instruction that works directly on memory addresses and all the memory magic is done by the hardware. But on a RISC architecture you might first have to load the value from memory, then the other value, then multiply them and then write back the result. So 4 instructions versus 1. You have to learn less instructions on RISC, but once you know them you will always have to read more lines for the simple things. In reality, both architectures have absolutely their value and good reason. Just for me, coming from x86 and having no experience, it probably gonna be a bit of a rough ride. But before we look at AVR assembler, let's continue with getting a broader overview of the device. So on embedded devices or generally very low level computers, you want to interact with hardware. Obviously there is no special instruction called turn LED on. Usually this is done with something called memory mapped I.O. It's pretty much hardware magic. From the perspective of the programmer we have a big chunk of memory we can use. You know from address 0 to like hex fffff. But not each memory address is the same. There are regions for example a certain part of this abstract memory model could indeed map to some memory, some flash where you can read and write values to like we would expect, but another address might map to an actual output pin. And you could define that writing a zero to that address will output a zero and writing anything but a zero would mean that the pin will output a logical one or in reality something like plus five volt. So if we think of our board, what kind of inputs and outputs we have, we know that there are multiple pins available. And we know that there is a serial UART interface that allows us to send data via RX and TX. And especially in our case where we interact with this board via serial, we are very interested in how that is done. So we can identify in the disassembly that we will reverse engineer what code is interacting with us, what is reading input. So I was interested in looking up the memory map of this microcontroller. Okay, so I searched for memory map. And then I get confused. This one here only shows application and bootloader flash region. There's no memory mapped I.O. How does that work? But I continue the search and I find finally a memory map that shows I.O. stuff. Wait, that is weird. This memory goes from address 0 to address hex 3FFF and this memory goes from 0 to hex 8FF. What? then the bootloader and the application code would overlap with the I.O. That doesn't make any sense. That stumped me for quite a while. I was not expecting that and obviously didn't read the documentation too carefully. I hate myself for how long that took me to figure out. It turns out AVR uses a Harvard architecture. And if you ever wondered why you had to learn weird things like Harvard versus von Neumann architecture in, in computer science classes, well, here's a good example. If I had never had that in school, I probably would not know about this. So in the Intel world, everything is just one big chunk of memory. 
program code lives in the same memory as does the data. Thus, we can do crazy exploits where we overflow the stack data and jump into the stack and execute code. On Harvard, this doesn't work. The data is separated from code. So you can never jump into data and execute code there because that just doesn't work that way. Anyway, I wanted to look at the memory stuff to figure out how the serial connection might work. So let's look in the data sheet for that. There's a section called USART, basically UART that I briefly mentioned before. It stands for Universal Synchronous Asynchronous Receiver Transceiver. Apparently it is highly flexible serial communication device. We are on the correct track. So here we have a block diagram that apparently describes this thing. Let's see if we can make some sense of it. Here's the RX and TX output, at least something we kind of know about. There's also a clock, which has something to do with the baud rate. Also kind of makes sense. We can also see that RX and TX use a shift register, which means the code doesn't have to actually speak the serial data format bit by bit, but can simply load the shift register with the help of the clock it will slowly get shifted out as serial output. And same with reading, it slowly fills up the shift register and we can then read the whole result. And there is an interesting note saying, refer to the pin configurations and the IO ports description for USART pin placement. We looked that up in a second. There is a lot more information here, but let's scroll a bit further down to see the receiving examples. If we read that and we completely don't understand it, we might have to go back and read a bit more. That's just how researching and learning new stuff works. So here we have an example written in AVR assembler and equivalent C code. The following code examples show a simple user receive function based on polling of the receive complete RXC flag. And for the assembly code, the receive data will be stored in R16 after the code completes. So it reads from a memory location called UCSR0A with the in instruction and then uses skip if bit is set and checks if the RXC bit or flag is set in that previous value. If it's not set, it will execute the jump afterwards to loop back up. But if it was complete, it would read from a memory location called UDR0 into register R16, which means it received a byte from the serial communication. We can also check the sending site and that basically works the same. It also uses UDR0 location, just this time to send data with the out instruction. So what is UDR0? When we search for it, we find this huge table, which is a register summary. And apparently UDR0 is at offset hex C6. UDR0 stands for USART IO data register. The description says that the user transmit data buffer register and receive data buffer register share the same I.O. address referred to as UDR0. The transmit data buffer register will be destination for data written to the UDR register location. Reading the UDR0 register location will return the contents of the received data buffer register. And the data memory map from before shows that external I.O. registers are between hex 60 and FF and the UDR0 register is at offset C6. So it's called a register, but it's also just an address in memory, a very low address, C6. This means if we find a read or write to that address, we have where serial data is handled. At this point, I won't go into further detail, but I think this video is a great introduction on how you can approach a new unknown field. I condensed in this video hours of research and I read small snippets here and there that will help me getting a better and better understanding of this architecture. Besides the official data sheet, I also googled a lot and read forum posts. The Arduino platform has a big community, so you find a lot of discussions that help you understand some weird AVR things. But one of the most helpful other resources I found are slides from an AVR workshop with Radar2, which was extremely helpful. For example, when I started debugging and reversing the first AVR binary, I was confused about weird stuff in IDA. When I read the slides, I learned that, yeah, there are addressing issues with AVR and IDA. Really annoying. And there are more small things like that. So thank you a lot, Darky and Duke Berman, for sharing your knowledge with us. You saved me from hours of frustration.